five different features you should be using in Silhouette Studio. Welcome to Silhouette Success. I'm Brenda Lambert, a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. And I'd love to show you how you can use the software more efficiently. So let's do this. The first feature we're going to look at is the sticky note. You can find it here on the left hand side of the screen and you use it like a real sticky note. These are meant for bits of information that you'll need to remember in a convenient spot. Just click on the note icon, then click anywhere on the design area to place it. At this point, you can double click and drag it around the design area, pull the side to resize it, and type out whatever information you'll need for future reference. You can also click on the X in the top right corner to delete it. I personally like to make a sticky note of the fonts that I have used in a project because once you weld a script font, that text becomes a design element and the software can no longer tell you what font it was to begin with. For this design, I've used a combination of a Barbie font and PN Boogie Woogie, but I will not remember that information a week from now. You can use the notes to remind yourself of the names and file locations of different elements within the design. This peace sign came from a hippie flowers bundle from Creative Fabrica. And I can jot down the name of the bundle and then I have it stored in my downloads. That way, if I decide I want to add another matching element down the road, I'll know where to look for them. And if you plan on sharing your design, you can leave your name and other information that the other user might find helpful. When you save the design as a Silhouette Studio file, either to your library or your hard drive, the notes will be saved as well and they'll automatically be brought back in the next time the file is open. This feature is super useful. You just need to remember that it's here. Now we're going to move on. Let's look at the different zoom options offered. Most people know about the plus and minus magnifying glasses at the top of the screen to zoom in and out, but the one I use most often is the one to the right of those. This one here lets you zoom into a specific spot in the design. It zooms like three times and really comes in handy whenever you're working with editing points or other fine details. Next to that, you'll see a double arrow icon and that allows you to zoom in and out using your mouse. It gives you greater control over the amount of the zoom and it's often quicker than repeatedly hitting the plus or minus zoom buttons. Next to the double arrow, you should see a hand icon. This feature allows you to double click on the design screen and move it around to focus on different areas. I often design with some stuff on the mat and some stuff off, so this lets me see different areas when needed. The last icon at the top there is fit to window, and that will resize your design and place it back in the center of the screen. All of these features can save you time and headache throughout the design process, but let's look at something that will help you with the weeding process. We're going to head over to the bottom right corner of the screen and click on Weed Settings. Use this feature to automatically create cut lines around your design elements. This creates smaller sections for weeding and really does make a huge difference. You can toggle the weeding lines on and off and also adjust the padding or how close the extra cut lines are to your actual designs. This is especially helpful with small text. You can choose horizontal, vertical, or both, and I definitely recommend that you give this a try. Now, if you go down just a bit more, you'll see a blue gear. This is the preference panel, and it literally allows you to customize your whole Silhouette Studio experience. Let's open it up and take a look. I'm not going to go into great depth here, but I'll touch on the important stuff and I can do a separate video on this panel if you need more information. 
there are seven tabs here and I'll give an overview of each one. We'll start with general and move through the rest in order. Under the general tab, you can select your default language, save location and unit of measurement. You can choose to show dimensions and print previews and you can set your print resolution. I have tested the different print resolutions available here and I have to say that there is not really a noticeable difference in my opinion. Moving on to defaults. This covers everything from page orientation to panel mode and it determines how the software behaves every time you open it. I recommend that you spend a few minutes in this tab and decide which options you use more often. For instance, if you find yourself using the same font time and again, you can set the default font to whatever that is and you won't have to worry about switching that font while you're designing. I'm actually going to change my default fill style to solid fill black. That way, when I'm filming tutorials, the design elements will be easier to see on the screen. I want to demonstrate the panel mode because this ties into the last feature I'm going to cover. Here you can choose from flexible, single, or multiple panel mode, and this determines how many panels you can have open on the design screen. When single panel mode is selected, I can only have one panel open at a time, and if I click on a different panel, Whichever panel was open will close and the new one will open in its place. Flexible panel mode acts like single panel mode unless you move the original panel before clicking on the next panel. You can have multiple panels open in this mode as long as the upper right hand corner where the panels typically open is clear. Now, multiple panel mode allows you to open as many panels as you'd like. It just kind of clicks them together like magnets. We're going to leave this set to multiple panels for now. We'll need this setting for the last feature I want to cover, but we're going to finish up here in preferences first. The next tab is all about how the software looks on your monitor. None of these options will affect the actual cut quality. You can customize a few things in here like the theme and background color, but I want to look at anti-aliasing. The higher the sample setting, the better your design is going to look on the screen. However, if you're having issues with the software freezing or crashing, try turning this off. You'll need to restart your computer for this to take effect, but it might just fix a few problems for you. Moving on to the import panel, you can see that you have options for GSD, SVG, DFX, and PNG files. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but I want to look at the PNG option. This is for auto trace, and if this box is checked, Silhouette Studio will generate cut lines around the element automatically. This feature is great for print and cut, but I typically only have this option on if I need it because it does put a strain on your system. So it's very useful, but also very taxing. Let's take a look at it. Here, Auto Trace is off. You can see it just brings in the image. Now I'm going to go back in and check the box so we can see the difference. Now you can see that there are cut lines around the actual design element. In the Tools tab, the first section is Action After Tool Use, and it lists a few different functions. You have after creating a shape, after drawing freehand, after using eraser, etc. If we click on the options, you can see that you can continue to do that function or return to select mode with your cursor. 
So if we have continued drawing shapes after selected, you can draw rectangle after rectangle. If you put it on Choose Select, then you'll be able to draw one rectangle and your cursor will be ready to select the next element or panel. You would have to click on the drawing tool here again if you wanted to draw a second rectangle. There are a couple more sections here, and again, I'm not going to cover them all right now. We'd be here way too long, but you want to go through these options when you're done here and make sure that your software is set up to be the most efficient for the way that you use it. The next tab just allows you to choose how often you want the software to check for updates, and the last tab is Advanced. In the advanced setting, you'll see packet size. This is automatically set to 1000, but if you find that your program is a bit laggy at times, you can set this lower and that should help. To be honest, I haven't messed with the rest of this tab. Now, I said just a bit ago that we are going to want to have the panel mode set to multiple. That was under the defaults tab, so let's head back there Double check that setting, click apply, then OK. The last feature that you should be using in Silhouette Studio is the new project wizard. This feature will set you up on a new design mat with a project template and all of the panels that you would typically use in that project. This one is for the card and you can see that it has brought in a 10 by 7 rectangle with a score line down the middle and it has only opened up the page setup panel. If I choose print and cut the new page will open with registration marks on and the offset and the trace panel open. This saves you a little bit of time and it also gives you a reminder of the things you may need to do to get this project done. Give it a try and let me know what you think. If you could do me a small favor, hit the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, you can watch this video or go create something amazing. I'll see you in the next video.